1.9 million doses of the vaccine the first week of April. Last week, that number had dropped to just 364,000. Many hospital systems now say they'll require employees, volunteers, and contractors to get vaccinated or risk losing their job or ability to work at a campus. Cardiologist Fami Farah supports the requirement, saying hospitals have long required proof of vaccinations. The flu virus, for instance, every year we have to provide proof that we've taken our flu vaccine shot. The reason being is because the impact it has on our society, especially in a hospital setting, every year during the flu season, our hospitals fill up with patients, you know, our ICUs fill up with patients. The purpose for requiring flu vaccine for the employees is, one, to protect employees themselves from contracting the flu or getting too sick from it but also on the other side to protect the patients that they're serving. So I don't see that requirement for COVID-19 vaccine as any different from the others. More hospitals are setting the vaccine requirement as COVID-19 hospitalizations increase. Texas had less than 1,600 COVID-19 patients July 1st. That number has more than quadrupled to more than 6,500. COVID-19 patients now use 29% of ICU beds in North Texas. It's frustrating because, you know, being in the frontline position, I have seen what it's capable of doing. I have seen what our ICUs and hospitals look like, you know, at the peak back in December and January. I have seen the devastation, the lives lost, and what the family members went through. And that's just something we don't want to see again. It's difficult for patients who go through it when they're in the hospital. It's difficult to see the lives lost. And it's difficult to see that patients, family members suffer. And this is something that could be prevented. And the fact that the new variant is here, the Delta variant, which is highly contagious, and it's more dangerous, and it is causing people to get more sick, precautions need to be taken. As a healthcare professional, I can say that. And this is preventable. Vaccine is one of the key methods of preventing this and for us to be able to get out of this pandemic. So strictly from a scientific and medical standpoint, I do think that it's reasonable for hospitals to require vaccination. And I do urge and encourage everyone who is eligible for the vaccine to take the vaccine. Ferris says there's an additional concern now with Governor Greg Abbott banning mask requirements in public buildings, but health officials are still recommending them. It is a concerning point for a lot of us medical professionals because Lately, there's been some confusion in the general public as to whether they should be wearing masks or not. And we have seen that masks work. We have seen that when we were not wearing masks, the infection was spreading much more quickly. When we started wearing masks more diligently, we were able to gain control a little bit better. And with the new variant, especially this new variant, which to give you a perspective, the Delta variant is so much more contagious. It can contain up to a thousand times more viral load. And so wearing a mask would be the right thing to do at this point. And in our nation, we have more than 90% of our cases right now are the Delta variant. So as a medical professional, I would say that wearing mask is the right way to go at this point. The Department of State Health Services says 62% of Texans 12 and older have received one dose of the vaccine. 53% are fully vaccinated. Farah says evidence is growing, the vaccine is effective, and it's safe. Well, this mRNA vaccine is new. The concept of vaccine itself is not new. We've had so many lives saved from vaccines worldwide. We've come a long way through vaccine. Vaccines are protective. And at this point, we do have quite a bit of data. We've had millions of people vaccinated, and it's, it's been some time, and we've had millions of people vaccinated. We've had a lot of data collected, you know, uh, so people are doing fairly well. It's true we still don't know what, what it's going to do long term, but from the data we have, from the signs we have, I don't think it's going to have any detrimental effects long term. On the other side, I will also say you don't know what the virus itself can do to you long term. And we're seeing some of the impact now. The patients who have been infected with the virus about a year ago, they're still suffering. There's something called the long haulers, COVID long haulers. A lot of these patients, they have recovered from the infection, the acute phase of the infection itself but they have lingering symptoms. Texas Health Resources will require vaccinations effective September 10th. 
Baylor Scott and White and Methodist Health will require vaccinations by October 1st. Parkland Hospital says because it's a public health system, the governor's order prevents them from requiring vaccines, but it is urging employees, volunteers, and contractors to get vaccinated. Alan Skaya, News Radio 1080, KUOD.